Pete, can you turn these lights down? For Christ's sake. When I introduce myself, should I call myself nationally award winning or is it national award winning? What, what am I, 100? What are you trying to get, get away my laugh lines? I'm 34. Well, I won an award. God, I don't need this. National, nationally. Pete, did you hear I, that I won? The lights, they're insane in here. Okay, man, what are you trying? All right, now, now that's just, that's just petty. Hello and welcome to the show that asks, who is pulling the strings? I'm your host, Charlie Smith, and thank you for joining me. Today's episode, we're going to sit down with Theresa May and talk about Brexit. But first up, Newton sits down and bears it all with Olivia the Nudist. Take a look. I really don't know much about nudists, you know. I, 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 I think I'm going to be blushing the whole time. Blushing <laughs> is just a natural thing that happens when we are around greatness. <laughs> oh, really? Well yeah. then, I guess I'll be blushing all the time around you. That's very sweet of you, but don't objectify me. W what made you want to be a nudist? It was my first time in Bali. I haven't worn a stitch of clothing. Puppet puns are my favorite. Oh, do you know any more? Um, no. Oh. So, do you live here in Chelmsford? I do. I have lived here for two years. Really? And you've been naked the whole time? Yes. I walk up and down 110, completely naked. I get a lot of looks. <laughs> it uh, helps me feel empowered. Are, aren't there other ways to do that that might be a little, um, you know, warmer? Are you body shaming me? Uh, no, no, not at all, not oh, at all, okay. not at all, Miss Olivia, no. Okay. Mm -mm. Very mm. good. In I'm fact, I'm still having trouble looking you right in the eye. In fact, yes, I'm, yes, well, uh, that's the wrong eye, little... Newton. But now, do you have other friends that are nudists? We are all parading around with our puppet-given goods. <laughs> wow. We call it the Friends of Fabricless Folks. Oh, the Friends yes. of FF. F? Uh, there's a lot of effing. Isn't this um, public television? I think we have to be careful about the F. No, free speech. Free speech! Free, oh, there's another F. Ah! Yeah. That's you? why I'm on public access. I used to have a CBS show, but then I called the, the uh, head of the network a, a ah! and they fired ah! uh, Pete, uh, I don't know. We, I think we're getting beeped. Oh. The censors are oh. coming in. Well, uh, I guess with that, um, Olivia, I think we were running out of time oh. and um, definitely running out of uh, dignity, that's for sure. I get that a lot. Please bring me back again. Oh, absolutely. Oh, of course. Well, anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks. Tell Teresa May to not keep it down back there. This is a news program. Professionalism is key here. Pete, can I? Oh, for God's sakes. Hi, I'm Charlie Smith, and this is Pat Snow. Chelmsford recently became one of the many towns in the area to acknowledge LGBTQ Pride Month for the first time. So we were there to accept the proclamation on behalf of the Chelmsford LGBTQ community. Let's take a look. This is a proclamation for uh, Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, and Queer Pride Month, June 2019. Whereas the town of Chelmsford is a welcoming community and an exceptional place to live, learn, work, play, and raise a family. And whereas Chelmsford recognizes the importance of equality and freedom. And whereas the nation, the nation was founded upon and is guided by a set of principles that includes that every person has been created equal, that each has rights to their life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, and that each shall be accorded the full recognition and protection of laws. And whereas the town of Chelmsford lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer LGBTQ community is a vital part of all fields and professions and contribute to a stronger community, and whereas the town of Chelmsford is dedicated to fostering acceptance of all its citizens and preventing discrimination and bullying based on sexual orientation and gender identity, and whereas Chelmsford is strengthened by and thrives upon so the, the rich diversity of ethnic, cultural, racial, gender, and sexual identities of his residents, all of which contribute to the vibrant character of our town. And whereas the Centers for Disease Control recognizes that LGBTQ teens are at higher risk to the to be the victims of violence and have increased suicide rates, and whereas it is imperative that young people in the community, regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity, feel valued, safe, empowered, and supported by their peers, educators, and community leaders. Now, therefore, we, the, we, the Board of Selectmen, on behalf of the Town of Chelmsford, hereby proclaim and recognize June 2019 as Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, and Queer Pride Month in the Town of Chelmsford and urge citizens to recognize the contributions made by members of the LGBTQ community and to actively promote the principles and equal of equality and liberty. 
Signed the 20th day of May, 2019, by Ken LaFave, Pat Wodis, Emily Antle, George Dixon, and Virginia Crockett Timmons, and the Board of Selectmen, and sealed by Patricia Zuras, the town clerk. Thank you. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, that's a really cool thing to hear. This is the sort of thing that I think can make the difference for young people realizing they're LGBT like I was like in the early 2000s. This is the sort of thing that makes a difference between kids feeling anxious and afraid when they enter adolescence or just feeling like normal kids. And it's awesome that Chelmsford is a place where uh, I think the latter is more true. Uh, yeah, this is kind of surreal. I um just having grown up before there were LGBTQ groups in high school, and then to have like yourselves at like be politicians just saying that it's okay and that we're accepted and we're safe is hugely different than the reality that I grew up in. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. And do one of you want to accept this? Oh, yeah. That's good. Well, <laughs> We'd like to thank the Chelmsford Board of Selectmen for signing this proclamation. And as you can clearly see, Patrick and I are now kings of the gays. Um, I, I don't think you can say that. I, I, don't, I don't even think that's really a thing, Charlie. We are presidents, co-presidents of the gays. We're two people. Forget it. But I feel like they were all, it was for uh, gay pride. I'm Charlie Smith, and today I'm going to teach you how to cook with cannabis. First thing you got to do is get some weed. That's probably my favorite sentence in the world. And this right here is a grinder. If you grind up your cannabis, then it's going to be a lot easier to extract the THC into the cooking oil. You would put it in this jar. I already cooked some today. I do a lot of weed cooking. We're gonna do four grams, which is just about half a gram more than an eighth. This cannabis is indica based, or an indica strain. The way that I remember it is indica makes you feel like you're in the couch, and it makes you feel all like sleepy and, and rested. And sativa is like a stimulant. And you wanna make sure that you're not cooking on a day where you have to drive or anything like that, because even just touching the oil gets you feeling a little loopy. Very time consuming. This is like singing Telephone by Lady Gaga. You get halfway through and then you're just like, oh my God, when does it end? There we go, all ground up. Throw that bad mamma jamma in here. The thing with cooking cannabis is that you have to decarboxylate it before you actually cook with it. So that means that you're activating the psychoactive components of the marijuana. To decarboxylate it, you have to gr like kind of grind it up, spread it across a baking sheet, put it in the oven at around 275 for like 20 minutes. Double check online. What was I saying? I'm such a stoner. Decarboxylating. Instead of decarboxylating this, this has this is just straight ground cannabis. So if you do it in this method by putting it in a mason jar, uh, it has a bunch of science that happens, and you don't have to decarboxylate it. It does that for itself by the way that you're extracting the THC. This jar is, where's the measurement? If I grab the wrong jar, it should be good. Take about four ounces. Pretend this is measured well. So this is four ounces, it's not. But this is just for personal use, so it kind of doesn't matter um, as long as you know your own limits and how much you can handle. Cannabis also can't kill you, so if you start to panic because you took a little too much, just lay down, do what you gotta do, have some hot cocoa, but you are fine and you won't die. It's just a little scary the first couple times that you're doing it if you don't um, pace yourself. And my grandmother used to say, you can always do more, you can't take less. But I don't think she was talking about cannabis, I think she was talking about cock. JK. So then take this mason jar, put a lid on it, which is a phrase I've heard a lot in life. You boil it in water, now this is a very interesting, uh, here, yeah, oh, oop, woo, okay, mm. hold on, hold on, ah, who's good at cooking? I'm good at cooking, full job. 
Um, so now I'm just going to go downstairs and grab some more stuff. <laughs> Fun having my own show. So then you wait two hours. Two hours is a long time to wait for your edibles. You have to come up with some different activities to help pass the time. Some suggestions would be rolling a joint, smoking a bowl, packing a bong, doing some dabs, hitting a vape pen, eating edibles that you cooked already, smoking a bong, sex, watching cartoons, that's a big one. Oh, what's another thing you could do? Ooh, eat a sandwich. You can eat the sandwich that you started before the show. Uh, it's a long time to wait, two hours. It's like four episodes of Bob's Burgers. What else lasts two hours? Sex with me. Just kidding, it doesn't. <laughs> We have coconut infused, no wait, cannabis infused coconut oil. You need your cheesecloth. Gee, I like having more than one. Like, ah, I'm back up here. And then I'm like, oh, where are we gonna go? What's gonna go? Okay, so I have these adorable little strainers. I think my aunt gave them to me. Incidentally, she doesn't like cannabis at all, so she'd be mortified if she knew what I was doing with them. These are metal strainers. And this is cheesecloth over a mason jar. I usually let it have like two layers or so of the cheesecloth um, just to make sure. So, and actually, whoop. Oh man, oh man, so much. All right, son of a. Oh, no, it's hot. Oh no! Oh, I'm wasting it! Son of a bitch. Okay, we'll use a smaller one. We'll just do it that way. Oh my God, what a mess. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Gesundheit. <What>? You're welcome. <laughs> oh, it's hot. It's still hot. All right. So then, there we go. So don't do it the first way I started, okay? You're going to want to put the cheesecloth on top of the strainer. Okay, so then you let this drip out. Drip, 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 drip. And then you squeeze this bad mamma jamma. Holy <laughs> that is hot. Oh, shnikes, okay. <laughs> oh, all right. And remember when you're cooking this, if you get some of the oil on your hands, you can just, and you're gonna get lit. You're gonna get super lit. This right here is infused. Which, when, hey, oh, hello again. So this right here is our coconut infused oil. So if you wanna know how many milligrams are in the oil that you've extracted, there's really no way to do that. You kind of have to just test it for yourself. The only true way to know milligrams is if you go to an actual testing facility, scientific test that's way uh, out of my pay grade. I'm just a citizen. It should have this kind of like greeny, uh, like a dark green yellow color. That's happiness in a jar, so enjoy. <laughs> Anybody want to lick my hands? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Hello, I'm Charlie Smith, comedian, jester, and nonsensical childlike nymph. Even though I pretty much treat everything in life like it's one big joke, sometimes I get serious. Seriously serious. So I got serious and sat down with former candidate for Congress, Alexandra Chandler, community activist, Hope Anderson, and Bilrica town rep, Yakov Trekreef. And I got some real grown-up advice from some real grown-ups that I really look up to. Take a look at our first installment of Charlie Gets Serious. How would you recommend to someone like myself, who is just some person that showed up one day and got inspired, how do I get started? First and foremost, just follow your passions that you already have mm -hmm. and, and look around you. It's, if, if you're living in a town or a city, whether it's Chelmsford, whether it's Lowell, and what, what makes you happy about your community and then what makes you not so happy. And take that as your starting point is my first piece of advice because that which comes organically to you and that you can most see the impact tangibly around you is what's gonna drive you and sustain you. And chances are there are probably already people that are doing that, some of that work around you. Mm -hmm. um, a quick internet search on 
the issue, whether it's that playground in Chelmsford that you want built, or mm -hmm. whether it's in Lowell, you know, city council, and how do we structure that, or whether it's where the high school happens to be. Look at that, see who's working on it, and send a person an email or join a group. Um, one big catch-all group that's been um, fostering a lot of civic engagement lately, depending on the nature of politics, are the invisible groups, and you can look up that online, and that's just a great way to jump in initially. And then you take it from there, mm -hmm. because those local issues with local impacts are best, but then maybe if your issue is at a higher level in terms of impacting state or national government, again, those existing groups will point you in the right direction. You don't have to invent the whole wheel to get right. started. It's intimidating to just jump in and be like, I care about politics. Um, so <laughs> do you think that there's uh, a way to start, or do you kind of just have to get in and awkward. <laughs> well, it's a little bit of all of those things, actually. Sometimes it's going to be a little bit awkward. You're going to meet new people, and that can be awkward. Start contacting some of the local officials about the things you care about. Say, hey, I, I saw that you were talking about this thing, and I wanted to give you my opinion on that. After that, show up at meetings. Start showing up. You're going to find that someone spoke at the open mic that supported the issue that you supported. Go talk to them and say, you know, I agree with you on that issue. Are there more of us who also agree with us on this issue? Because nine times out of ten, the person who spoke at the open mic knows another dozen people who agree with you. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Side note, but I think it goes along. If you're looking for something to get involved in, the FCC needs to hear from people to protect our public access stations. Yeah. So that's one thing that people can do. And if they're already watching this show, then they like public access. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> or they like just awkward people like me, um, which is, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, if, I think that if um, people really understood the gravity of the FCC situation, they'd be in the streets. I mean, it's really frustrating to see um, mm -hmm. such a, uh, it's a it's a U.S. like privilege like to be able to have free speech is the I feel the one thing that our founding fathers set up that we all agree on you know because um, there's a lot of other things that that people would not agree that you know like just guns like people just are so polarized on that one issue but I feel like free speech and the need for us to be able to communicate with each other without you know, NBC, MSNBC, and stuff like that in the middle is is huge. And one other thing you can do to get involved is get involved in a campaign. Find out who's running for board of selectmen or city council or school committee or other offices in your community and start getting to know them and find out, you know, if their issues are the same as your issues um, and you believe in their campaign, get involved, you know, knock some doors or if it's for an issue like like we did Yes on 3, um, you know, get involved for an issue or a candidate and actually get out there and, you know, knock some doors, make some phone calls. I know some of those things are terrifying to people, but find ways that are beneficial to the campaign that you can get involved in and you'll meet amazing people through volunteering on campaigns. Mm -hmm. What are other ways that you can get involved, uh, par partisan or, or not? Well, one thing you can do is in your town or city, uh, if you belong to a political party, such as the Democrats or the Republicans, you can seek out your local uh, Democratic, Republican, town committee, or city committee. And uh, these organizations, you do have to be voted into them, so there may or may not be a spot currently, uh, but anybody who belongs to that party in that town or city can go to the meetings and find out about them. And it's a, you know, even though the town politics are not partisan uh, by definition, um, it's, it's a good way to find out some, somehow, you know, um, how, who the movers and shakers are in, right. in the partisan politics, which may or may not transfer over to the, the actual town elected offices. But it, it's, a, it's a good way to find out also about campaigns that you know, people in the town might be supporting uh, on the state level as well, such as state representatives, which mm -hmm. you know, obviously also have a lot to do with the, with the town. Right. So who are some of your political giants that you would love to meet one day or say, thank you for inspiring me? Well, I've got one. Actually, I've got more well, like 20 of them or so, but one that I can mention here, though I have met her, Maura Healy. Because to me, there, there's someone who, she has the Office of Attorney General within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and she uses that office not just to serve the people of the Commonwealth, whether it's in consumer protections, whether it's taking on certain interests, whether it's advancing a certain agenda, 
she also serves to the benefit of the country as a whole in all the lawsuits and activism that she's engaged in with other attorneys general throughout the country. And that's, that's someone who's redefined the office in a particular way to meet the needs of the moment. So she is very inspiring to me. And then further off, Pramila Jalapal, uh, Congresswoman. She is just a font of such wonderful ideas and someone who isn't just about the ideas and then their policies that sit on a shelf, but she is great in how she advocates for them and how she builds coalitions around them as a member of the Progressive Caucus in the I House. I love it. You are the company mm -hmm. you keep is one of my favorite sayings. Like, you yeah. are the company you keep. There's just truth to that. So who do you like to keep you company? I really enjoyed uh, working on Karen Cirillo's city council campaign in Lowell <laughs> in 2017. She's amazing. Um, she basically came out of nowhere. You know, it was I was asking her early on in the campaign kind of what connections she had about groups that were already supporting her and so forth. And she basically came out of nowhere. And, yeah. um, you know, obviously she, she worked really, really, really hard. Um, she worked on the high school issue for, for Lowell High school uh, keeping it downtown and met a lot of people that way but she just worked really really hard met a lot of voters personally when I mentioned her to people later in the campaign she said um, oh uh, you know, people said oh yeah I, I think I, I think I met her outside a market basket you know she was <laughs> handing out literature I mean they, she worked really really hard and um, I was really pl pleased to be uh, volunteering on her campaign um, I actually something about I didn't meet her till after she won but she reminds me of, of you in her approachability mm -hmm. like she's very like hey how you doing she's, great. she's a really easy she's person great. to um, and I love that in a politician because I don't like someone wearing an outfit like that's serious with cufflinks and like hello I'm intimidating and I'm just like ah, like you you make the rules of the country because I don't know, you know what I mean? it's just daunting um, Trek how about yourself uh, twofold I'm gonna start with Chris Tribu yeah. and you know, the Democratic, we had a Democratic candidate running in, in Bill Ricca for state representative. Um, and she had to drop out, and it looked like we weren't going to run anyone. And a kid who graduated from having uh, really worked hard through the special education um, uh, provided f through Bill Ricca schools, uh, who rose himself up and put himself through college, you know, worked himself through college, and still is working, him, working his way through college, decided to step up and say, it's not enough for us to just run a blank this year. We actually have to have someone on the ballot. That's how we build movements. Right. And when there is now a movement with over 71 members, very active, uh, and it's because of him. But, um, and so I'm, he's really inspiring to me. But in terms of people I haven't met who are political heroes, um, I met maybe one or two folks uh, are the, uh, the trans youth who worked on the Yes on Three campaign who went around the state yes. and boldly and courageously oh. told their stories because that changes the world. Oh, you're yes. going to make me cry. I actually became really good friends with um, Carmen, mm. who is mm -hmm. Ashton's, mom. Ashton's mom. Yes, she yeah, invited right. me to There's Christmas. Like, I oh. spent Christmas oh. with their family. Oh. I love Carmen, and Ashton's great. He did so well. Um, I mean, he's like 14, and he mm -hmm. spoke yep. like a you know a seasoned veteran on, on this. I'd just like to thank you all for being here. You really, truly have inspired me to get involved and start this very serious news program. <laughs> and um, I would just like to uh, sincerely say thank you. And please come back again when I'm more weathered and seasoned <laughs> at this, and I'll just be like, hey, guys, come here. Nice to have you back. This has been Charlie Smith for Who's Pulling the Strings? And that's it for tonight. We ran a little long, so my apologies to Theresa May. I hope that flight back to England isn't too long. <laughs> and until next time, I'm Charlie Smith, asking the question, who is pulling the strings? Hi, I'm Charlie Smith, and this is executive producer and co-writer of Who's Pulling the Strings, Patrick Snow. Yeah, you're going to want that. Hi. <laughs> I wasn't ready for oh, it. Oh, sorry. Do you want me to wait? <laughs> no, that was amazing. Okay, hold on. We recently were part of the proclamation ceremony that Chelmsford held to acknowledge LGBTQ pride. Wait, pride. We're proud. I wanted to shrink you and keep you in my pocket. That's really awkward. And now we will sing the gay people national anthem. <laughs> if I could turn back down. <laughs> I didn't know if I was going to be done talking, so that makes sense that you didn't know if I was going to be done talking. Recently, Chelmsford began... <laughs> Sorry. Wait, what are you doing right now? Like playing swords. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs>
Nailed it!